In this video, we discuss about the quantum theory of Raman effect. So Raman effect is quantum mechanical phenomena, which is considered to be the interaction between the molecules of the substance and the photon. So it is a photon molecule interaction. Photon is considered to be particle. It is a packet of energy. It is considered as a particle having the particular frequency h nu okay oh, sorry energy h nu of frequency nu it interacts with the molecule and after the interaction the scattering of light takes place the photon may gain the energy or it may lose the energy because of that the scattered light contains the frequency of light other than the frequency of incident light that is how the photon it may gain the energy or it may lose the energy because of the scattering. So Raman effect can be explained using the quantum theory. According to quantum theory, the Raman effect is due to the inelastic collision between the incident photon and the molecule of the substance. So when photon falls on the substance, there is an inelastic collision. Inelastic collision means the kinetic energy is going to be transferred between the molecule and the photon. So that is called as inelastic. If kinetic energy is not transferred, that is called as elastic collision. But Raman effect is due to the inelastic collision between the incident photon and the molecule. You have to remember these points properly. Since the collision is inelastic, the kinetic energy or the energy is going to be exchanged between the photons and the molecule. So collision takes place between the photon and the molecule and energy is going to be exchanged. This exchange of energy leads to the phenomena of Raman effect, which gives you the frequency of radiation other than the incident light. Therefore, the scattered photon may be of higher or lower frequency compared to the frequency of incident photon. Basically, energy of photon is given by h nu, which depends on the frequency nu. Because of the inelastic collision, the photon may gain the energy. It may get the energy from the molecule or it may lose the energy. It may be given to the molecule. That's why the scattered photon may be of higher energy or it may be of lower energy compared to the incident photon. Okay, that means it may be of higher or lower frequency compared to the frequency of incident photon. And that variation of frequency or energy takes place because of the inelastic collision. Raman effect is due to the interaction between the photon and scattering molecule. Already I have told you, inelastic collision between photon and scattering molecule gives rise to Raman effect. Let us take the explanation of Raman effect using quantum theory. Suppose a photon of frequency nu1 is incident on a molecule and there is a collision between the two. So photon has initial frequency nu1 which interacts with the molecule. Okay. Let us take E1 and E2 be the intrinsic energies of the molecule before and after collision. Okay. E1 is the intrinsic energy of the molecule, otherwise kinetic energy of the molecule before collision. And E2 is the energy of the molecule after collision, respectively. Let nu2 be the frequency of the scattered photon. Okay, so we have taken nu1 as a incident frequency of photon. Nu2 is the frequency of the scattered photon. E1 and E2 are the energies of the molecule before and after collision respectively. Now let us take applying the principle of conservation of energy. Let us apply the conservation of energy. So initial energy, that is energy before collision should be equal to energy after collision. So here two particles are going to be collided. Okay. So photon and molecule. First we will take the energy before collision, that is E1 plus H nu1. E1 is the energy of the molecule. H nu1 is the energy of the photon. This is before collision. 
So after collision, the energy of the molecule becomes E2 and the energy of the photon becomes H nu2. So frequency of the photon is going to be changed. So energy before collision should be equal to energy after collision. So they represent total energies, energy of molecule plus energy of photon. This is energy of molecule plus energy of photon. They will change. Okay. Therefore, we can get the equation H nu2 minus H nu1. The change in energy of photon should be equal to E1 minus E2. That is change in energy of the molecule. So there is a transfer of energy between molecule and photon. If photon gains the energy, if energy of the photon increases, then energy of the molecule should decrease. If energy of the photon decreases after collision, the energy of the molecule will increase. So energy is given to the molecule, photon loses the energy. If molecule gives the energy to the photon, then photon gains the energy. And that gain or loss of energy is because of the transition of molecule from one energy level to the another energy level. That's why the gain or loss of energy is quantized. It is going to be discrete. And that is the reason why you will get the discrete lines. Okay. We'll come to that. So therefore, the variation in frequency of the photon or change in frequency of the photon is given by nu2 minus nu1 is equal to E1 minus E2 by H. So this variation of frequency depends on the loss or gain of energy of the molecule. Okay, E1 minus E2. The frequency of scattered light, therefore the frequency of scattered light is given by nu2 is equal to nu1 plus E1 minus E2 by H. This E1 minus E2 may be positive or negative. So frequency of the scattered photon may be more than nu1 or may be less than nu1 depending on the sign of E1 minus E2. Let us take that. Three cases may arise. First case is when there is no change in energy of the molecule. Let us take the one first case. If there is no change in energy of the molecule, then E1 should be equal to E2. The initial energy of the molecule should be equal to final energy of the molecule. Then it is observed that the frequency of scattered photon should be equal to frequency of incident photon. Nu2 will be equal to nu1. So this represents no change in frequency of the incident line. So scattered frequency is equal to incident frequency of light. Okay, that is one first case. This gives rise to the incident light only. Second case, if energy E1 is less than E2, suppose the energy of the molecule before collision is lesser compared to energy of the molecule after collision. E2 is greater. So molecule has gained the energy. Then what happens? This frequency nu2 should be less than nu1. So that means the photon will lose the energy. If molecule gains the energy, the photon will lose the energy. So if energy is lost by the photon, this gives rise to Stokes line. Okay. So Stokes lines are lower frequency radiation compared to the incident frequency radiation. It means that the molecule has absorbed some energy from the incident photon. Consequently, the scattered photon has lower energy or longer wavelength. Okay. So it has lower energy or it corresponds to longer wavelength line, they are called as Stokes lines. So in order to obtain the Stokes line, the process of absorption of energy by the molecule takes place. Okay, so photon will transfer the energy to the molecule, then Stokes lines are observed. The third case, if E1 is greater than E2, the energy of the molecule before collision is greater than energy of the molecule after collision. Okay. So here molecule loses the energy. Then definitely the frequency of scattered photon should be greater than frequency of the incident photon. That means photon gains the energy. So this gives rise to anti-Stokes line. 
it means that the molecule was previously in the excited state and it exchanges some of its intrinsic energy to the incident photon so molecule transfers some energy to the incident photon so that photon energy increases therefore the scattered photon has greater energy or shorter wavelength compared to the incident radiation so anti stokes line have higher energy higher frequency and shorter wavelength so they give rise to anti stokes line the frequency difference nu2 minus nu1 between the incident and scattered photon depends on the scattering molecule only and that difference is represents the characteristic property of the molecule this change in frequency represents the characteristic property of the molecule they are going to be fixed whatever may be the incident radiation so that's why raman spectrum is a fingerprint of a substance the difference nu2 minus nu1 is observed for a particular substance and that is observed for that substance only different substances will gives rise to different frequency variation okay so that is how the raman effect is useful in the study of the properties of the molecule finally what are the applications of raman effect will take raman effect is you basically use it to study the molecular structure the analysis of raman spectrum produced by a sample gives the molecular structure it can give the bond angles bond stiffness and other structural information you can find the bond length etc you can recall the experiment and experiment done in the laboratory we have studied the raman spectrum of n2 molecule and there you have studied the bond length of the molecule moment of inertia of the molecule and some other information you have derived by the analysis of raman spectrum so basically the study of raman spectrum may give rise to the understanding of molecular structure bond angles bond stiffness and other structural information of the molecule for some samples vibrational spectrum is also required from the analysis of raman spectra of a diatomic molecule the nature of chemical bond existing between the atoms can be identified whether the chemical bonding is covalent bond ionic bonding so those bonding can be understood by study of raman spectra for some samples you may have to study the vibrational spectrum also both are necessary okay so just to remember raman spectrum can give the information about the molecular structure next the raman effect in crystals is complementary to the x-ray crystal study and provides the information about the binding forces in the crystal okay you can find out the force constant of the bond okay you can find out what is the vibrational frequency of the molecule you can find the rotational constant of the molecule moment of inertia so like that you can find the different uh, constant or characteristic properties of the molecule by studying the raman effect as x rays gives rise to information about the solids raman effect can give rise to information about the liquids okay liquid samples various chemical effects like strength of the chemical bonds electrolytic dislocations hydrolysis etc can be studied using raman effect okay so strength of the chemical bonds you can study electrolytic dislocations if you dissolve the sample in electrolytic uh, solvent okay so how does the structure of the molecule changes how dislocation of the molecules so atoms in the molecule changes so that can be studied and effect of hydrolysis on the sample can be studied using raman effect okay after the hydrolysis you have to study the raman spectrum before the hydrolysis you have to study the raman spectrum how does the raman spectrum varies by studying that variation you can observe the characteristic properties of that sample specific heat capacities of solids brilliance of metals and their molecular structure can be explained by raman effect okay so some of the solids 
may be dissolved in a sample and using that you can study the specific heat capacity brilliance of metals that is how the shining of the property of the metal that is a reflection property you can study and their molecular structure and variation in the molecular structure can be explained by the raman effect so there are a lot of applications of raman effect in the study of characteristics of the substances that is one of the major point you have to remember so let us end here so this is about the molecular spectroscopy and scattering of light